Scissors are the most basic paper sculpture tool and for just a minute about using scissors. A lot of times people have a bad cut because they just take the scissors and flop them in their hands. What you need is for the two blades to push tightly together with a clean cut. And so you're going to pull with your thumb and push with your fingers. Notice that when you cut, your scissor blade should not move. It's your opposite hand that's doing all the work. The opposite hand turns the paper the direction that you want to go, and your scissors pretty much stay in the same direction. And in that way, you have the most control. Apart from scissors, we're going to use glue. Liquid glue sticks best. Glue sticks tend to be better for when there's no pressure against the paper, but when you're doing paper sculpture, you want to use just tiny dots along the edges. If I'm cutting a V shape into a piece of paper, then what I want to do is rather than cut in and turn my scissors in that corner, and create like a tear there, I'm going to cut in first from one side and then from take my scissors out and cut in from the other side so that I get a nice clean cut where those two points meet. If I'm cutting a curve, I want to cut with the curve, not to it. If I cut straight up to a curve edge like this and then try and turn the scissors, I'm going to get a glitch in the shape that I'm cutting there. The much better way is to sort of sneak up on it, come at it from an angle, and then cut smoothly all the way around. If I want to cut a shape out of the center of a piece of paper. Of course I can take the edge of a scissors and jab through, but if it's small or more precise, I might want to cut into it. I don't want to fold the paper here. I don't want sharp foldy lines there. So I'm just going to make a very soft fold and then cut it with the scissors. And you can see that there's no permanent fold along the edges. And even on the inside here, as I'm cutting up to the curve, I want to cut with the curve and not straight to it so that I maintain a clean cut the whole way around. And again, turn the paper, not the scissors, when you're cutting out any kind of a shape, and you will have more control. The first technique we're going to do is scoring. To score means to make a dent or a scratch in the paper to control the fold. You can score with any number of tools, anything that's sharp or um, will emboss the paper. Here I'm scoring with a scissors and a ruler because I want to make straight score lines for folding. Here I'm going to score it with a pen. We tend to collect a lot of dead pens. This one's not dead, but a dead pen makes a wonderful embossed line in a paper without leaving the ink trail that I'm getting here. And you can see that once you've scored it, you get a nice, straight, clean fold. I'm going back and forth, back and forth here, which is a pleat fold. And there are all kinds of uses for this in paper sculpture. What I want you to do is start a page where you're going to store all of these little paper sculpture things. Write number one, straight score, pleat. And again with the glue, tiny dots just along the places where it will touch the paper. You don't need glue all over the place making the paper weak and wilty. So yeah, on some final paper, record that. I just put this in here. It's a nice little piece of paper sculpture that includes scoring. So just for fun, I stuck that in there. Speaking of just for fun, you can also curve score and get folded curves, which is fun. The trick is you don't want to try and fold it in half like you'd fold a flat sheet of paper. What you want to do is just fold a tiny piece, pinch along the edges like this, kind of think of your fingers like a Pac-Man, and like pinch along just one tiny section of the curve at a time. Eventually then you get the whole curve to fold. 
but you only want you don't want to try to fold the whole curve at once or it'll come out as a straight fold instead of a curved fold so i'm just going to like work my fingers along each little curved fold here and you can see that i'm doing a um, pleat again but this is a curved pleat comes out looking like a wave or a rainbow kind of a deal and again since I'm going to be collecting these practice techniques, go ahead and on a paper write number two, curve score, and then use tiny dots of glue just along the edges where the edges will touch the paper. And glue that down. I'm not going to show you that you need to maintain these on a final sheet every single time uh, just to get the idea circle score so if you don't have a compass there's a really fun trick for making drawing a nice circle you can use a paper clip and two writing instruments i'm going to use a pen and a pencil here and just put one at each end of the paper clip spin it around and you'll get a nice circle for this exercise, I want to circle within a circle, so I'm going to use both parts of the paper clip. Now I've got a circle in a circle. And I want to make sure that I've marked, too, there's a little pencil dust there. I want to be able to see where that center is. So then on the outer circle, cut it out. Make sure that if you're cutting something that's long and smooth, use the whole blade of the scissors here. The less times you have to open the scissors, the less little glitches there are going to be in the cuts. And again, turn the paper, don't turn the scissors. And then I'm going to score the inner circle. So I'm just taking a pen and pressing really hard along that inner circle score line. And you can see here where I've marked the center of this circle right there. So I'm going to make a straight line that goes to the center and cut along that line as well. And stop when you get to the center. There you go. Now I need to do that little pinchy fingers curved fold again. So again, don't try to fold the whole thing at once. Just run your fingers along the edge pinch it and move along there we go so then i'm going to slide where i cut that edge i'm going to slide one edge along the other and see the kind of makes a volcano form from one side or a little hat from the other side the further i slide it along the more steep the cone will be on the inside there so slide it until you it's where you like it depending on what you're trying to do and then once again tiny dots of glue even if in a place like this where there's going to be some pressure against where i'm gluing it i'm only needing tiny dots of glue just along the edges and when you're using liquid glue you have to use a little patience once you've got it where you want it to be you know, fold it over, hold it, and count to 20 while that glue sets. We really don't want scotch tape sticking all over this thing. So have the patience and glue it, or if you want to use a little masking tape or something to hold it in place while you're, um, while it's setting, you can do that. Just be careful that you use a tape that's not going to tear up the paper. And again, teeny tiny dots of glue just where it will touch the paper. Number three, circle score. And glue it down. All right, we're going to show you a few paper curling techniques here. So take some paper and cut strips out of it. They don't need to be perfect. These are just for practice exercises. 
The first way that you can curl paper is pencil curling. All you need to do is wrap it tightly around a pencil or any kind of a cylinder and apply friction. So whether you roll it back and forth in your hands or heat it a little bit, any kind of friction will encourage it to hold that. Now, if you use a pencil that's got that's not perfectly round, then you get this nice uh, these little lines up and down your score or your curve. I can use something that doesn't have those little lines and I can apply friction by turning the pen inside and it will hold that curve. And if I want to make something smaller, I've got this uh, crochet hook. You, again, you can use a nail, you can use whatever is available to you. And apply friction and then it will hold its curve, curl. So those are all different sorts of pencil curls that you can do. The other way you can do it is scissors curling. This is just like if you um, are curling ribbon. So you want to hold the paper between your thumb and the scissors blade. Pretend there's jelly on one side and you're trying to scrape that jelly off. And that's how you get a scissors curl. Now we're going to make a couple of different kinds of cones. This first one is called a square cone. So I'm starting with a square. If you don't start with a perfect square, that's okay, but uh, it'll look a little bit different. And I'm going to use these two edges and bring them together so that this point, it, it'll fight you. Like this little point down here, it's going to fight you. It doesn't want to go together. Sometimes I run my thumbnail over that to, um, make it cooperate a little bit better. But I want the point of my cone to be at that corner. Again, tiny dots of glue. And then I'm going to hold it, count to 20 while that sets. And that makes that pretty little top on the square cone. A circle's cone, once again, we want to start with a circle. Hooray for our paper clip trick. And we know where the center is. And again, long, smooth cuts. Use the whole blade. If you're cutting out something like a circle, turn the paper, don't turn the scissors. And then I'm going to make two cuts to the center here, right to the center so that I get a nice, neat corner there. And I end up with something that kind of looks like Pac-Man. Take those two cut edges fold one over the other. This is sort of like that circle score that we did. The further I fold it over, the taller cone shape I'm going to have. Do you want to hear me say tiny dots of glue just along the edge again, or have you heard that enough? There you go. A controlled tear. Paper has a grain, so it's going to tear more easily in one direction than the other. If I want to control exactly where it's going to tear, I can put clean water on a paintbrush and just paint the water where I want the paper to tear. Once it goes gray like that, then pull at it gently and you're able to control exactly where the paper tears, which gives you this lovely little deckled edge. 